Okay, so in the last video we saw this very strange behavior of elementary particles in the double slit experiment, where they, on the one hand they behave like particles, uh, they are discrete, you always see some integer number of them, a whole number, 0, 1, 2. On the other hand, they demonstrate this interference pattern when we view them, you know, when, when the two slits are open. The mathematics, of course, is very simple. It's very much like water waves, except how do we make sense of this probability amplitude? Electron went through slit 1 and ended up at, a, at the detector. The fact that it's some complex number it can be positive, negative, it can be imaginary. How do you make sense of this? What does it all mean, anyway? So, you know, part of problem in quantum mechanics is coming to terms with this and accepting that this is how nature behaves. Also, understanding how to develop a new intuition about how to deal with it. Okay, so in this video, we are going to understand this phenomenon a little more deeply to understand some consequences of it. Okay, so first let's write down a simple proposition which expresses our intuition about how a particle should behave. So a particle is supposed to have a trajectory. It's supposed to, you know, you, you should be able to track its path. So this proposition says the electron either went through slit 1 or it went through slit 2. So if it arrived at x, it started from the source, it must have either taken this path or that path. Obviously, if that were the case, then we should not have seen the interference pattern. We should have seen this curve when both slits were open. So this proposition is obviously false, but let's try to investigate it a little further by designing an experiment to see where it went wrong. So we're going to test, we're going to design an experiment that will test this, this proposition. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a source of light very close to the slit. So to try to detect whether the electron went through slit 1 or through slit 2. Now, an electron will scatter light. And so if the electron is going through slit 1, we'll detect it there. Or similarly for slit 2, if we place a source of light there, we, we'd be able to detect whether the electron went through slit 2. OK, so let's, let's do this and see what happens. So now uh, let's close one of the slits. And sorry, sorry, we leave both of the slits open, except that now what we are doing is we count not just how many, how many electrons arrived at, us at a particular point x, but also keep track of, at the same time, whether an electron went through slit 1 or it went through slit 2, or both, or, or whatever. So now we can, you know, it turns out that um, we, can, we can create a new, new curve p1 prime of x which is, how many times did we see an electron, we detected that it, it went through slit 1, and then we detected that it ended up at x about the same time, soon thereafter. And similarly, we have a curve P2 prime of x, which is, when did we detect a, an electron going through slit 2 and ending up at x? It turns out P1 prime looks very similar to P1 of x. P2 prime looks very similar to P2 of x. This was the curve that we got when we, when we closed slit 2. This is the curve that we got when we closed slit 1. OK, but now what happens? But since both slits have been, are open, surely the probability of, a fourth, of an electron ending up at x is really the sum of p1 prime and p2 prime. So how is nature going to escape this and, and give us the interference pattern? We can look at what we get in terms of p12 prime of x which is the total number of, of electrons that end up at x. And it's exactly p1 prime of x plus p2 prime of x. And it's not equal to the interference pattern. So nature sort of manages to, if you can tell which slit the electron goes through, then the interference pattern disappears. This is a very strange thing. So now we could try to investigate it a little further. And we could say, OK, what's really happening is that when we put the light here, you know, these electrons are very delicate. And so what the light does is it knocks it, you know, it, it changes its trajectory slightly. And so it smooths out this interference pattern. You know, in other words, somehow we, we, get, we get a smooth version of the interference pattern because the electrons are getting knocked about and we get this, this curve. So can't we turn down the intensity of the light source so that we barely disturb the, the electron at all? 
And now we discover something very strange. You see, because light itself is quantized, it comes as distinct photons. And so as we start turning down the intensity of the light, in fact, when we turn it down sufficiently, we stop disturbing the, the electrons. But also, there are times when there's no photon being emitted when the electron is going past. And so we miss some of the electrons. And so what we get is, some of the time, we can detect the electrons going through slit 1, sometimes through slit 2, and sometimes we don't detect them at all. And what do we see as in terms of the probability with which the, with which the electron is detected at x? Well, we see exactly that same combination of this curve, the interference curve, and this curve. So in other words, the electrons that we detect, if we detect which slit it went through, then, then those add up just like this. If we do not detect which slit it went through, then it creates an interference pattern. And so we get some combination of these two in exactly the right proportion. What this tells us is something very, very important and fundamental about quantum systems. Quantum systems are very delicate. An electron is very delicate. If you measure it, if you try to look at it, it disturbs the system. And now your experiment is not the same as it used to be. So you can make the light fainter and fainter to try to not disturb the system. But the fainter you make the light, the less you can, you know, the, the less your chance of actually performing a measurement. And so there is no free lunch. You, you, you know, if you're going to measure, if you get an outcome, then you've disturbed the system. And this is something that's expressed in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This principle says it's impossible in, in, the, in, the, in the double slit experiment. So if you, it's, it's a more general principle, but if you, if you see what it says for the double slit experiment, it basically says that it's impossible to design an apparatus that detects which slit the electron went through without disturbing the interference pattern. So the extent to which you can detect which slit it went through is the extent to which you disturb the electron and therefore disturb the interference pattern. OK, now let's look at, let's turn to one more very fundamental thing we can learn about quantum mechanics by examining this, this experiment a little more closely. So you might imagine, well, the, you know, this, this electron, when it was emitted from the source, the particular path it would follow, you know, whether it, whether it got knocked out and it bent around in some, some way and it went through slit one or it went through slit two as it diffracted past this, past this, uh, this first uh, hole here. Well, you might imagine that if we had much more information about the electron as it was starting out, perhaps we could actually predict which slit it would go through. You know, maybe the fact that we are saying, well, it went through either slit one or slit two, it's just, it's just a consequence of, of our lack of knowledge about the initial conditions. And maybe if we knew enough about the initial conditions of the electron, we could predict which slit it went through. Well, actually, if we could, then we could repeat what we were trying to do in the previous experiment with, with the light to detect which, which slit the electron went through. Except now we don't need the light at all, because the initial conditions tell us which slit it went through. And so if we could predict which slit the electron went through, then again, we wouldn't get an interference pattern. So the fact that we do get an interference pattern tells us that, in fact, there's no way of predicting which slit the, 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 photon, the, the electron went through. So somehow this probability is inherent in quantum mechanics. You know, this, this fact that when you make a measurement, you, you get a random outcome. This is completely inherent in quantum mechanics. It's not a lack of knowledge. It's inherent. OK, so later in, in a couple of lectures, we'll see, we'll see these concepts in a much more emphatic way and also in, in a more precise way in the, in the language of qubits.